everyone. Thanks for coming and joining me for my eighth Facebook Live presentation. Um, I'd like to take, thank Mike and Susie and my husband Chip for all their help. And I'd like to also tell you that if you're inclined, you can help me because on my last video, uh, last I checked, I had 822 views. And I did a little bit of math, and if everybody brings an additional viewer, I'll be at 1,644, and five additional viewers, 4,110, and 10 additional viewers, 8,220. That's really not a whole lot. You probably know when it comes to social media, but it wouldn't hurt. So if you're inclined to share what I'm doing, um, I would really appreciate it. Uh, tonight I'm going to play six pieces for you, five originals. And I will talk about the song so you know what it is I'm playing and um, maybe invite you to help me with the title of one piece that I'm playing tonight that does not have a title. So I'm ready to begin. Um, the first song I'm going to play for you was written by Jim Croce. And if you don't happen to know who he is, um, you might like to look him up. His last name is spelled C-R-O-C-E, and he wrote you know, lots of big hits and was a guitarist and, the, and a vocalist, and he did his, um, wrote the lyrics, was the singer, was the performer, was quite a hit. Uh, this song by his is called Photographs and Memories, and it's uh, beautiful words, too, if you'd like to look it up, if you don't know those words. Photographs and Memories by Jim Croce. Uh, isn't it funny how 
you know, human being is here, and then um, they're gone, and you just, um, the general public doesn't know who he is or anything about his life. So um, I asked my sister to write a poem for him, and um, it's called Who Will Remember? And um, so the words just, they just speak to that sentiment. So Bob Sullivan, this is for you, who will remember. do for me. Um, the next song I'm going to play was inspired by a poem that I found, and the poem is called Alone, and the author is Marianne Gentile. I don't know her. I've never met her. She doesn't know me, um, but her poem was inspirational for this song, and again, if you'd like to look up the words, it's beautiful poetry. And um, I really think the way that I wrote this one fits perfectly with these words. So this is my song called Alone.
laughing because sometimes I wonder if I know what I'm doing. Um, my next piece, um, I also wanted to tell you, I love doing little cards like this. I write down quotes and thoughts and ideas, and um, I love uh, a lot of things that Oliver Sacks wrote. Uh, he was, a, I believe, a neurosurgeon, and he said that music imprints itself on the brain deeper than any other human experience. And that's why it's really important that, that we have music in our life, and all the better if you can study it um, and learn something about it. This next piece is, um, actually, I just thought of the title the other day, and I thought, well, I better do something with a little bit different mood. So this song moves, moves along a little bit, and I decided to call it Runaway. Um, if you have a better title, let me know, but right now it's called Runaway. Maybe you can help me with the title. 
And just to give you an idea of, um, I have no idea why it lingered in my mind, but I always write down the date that I write a song. And this particular song was written in December of 14. So it's already four years old and um, it's been sitting around without a title. So maybe you can help me with this song. Open to suggestions.
My first piano was given to our family by neighbors that were moving that didn't want to take it, and it was a big, heavy, a player piano upright without the player mechanism, but it was really a very good piano I didn't know. It was a Goldbrinson. And then after that, my mom exchanged $800 worth of old coins that she saved to buy me a $1,500 baby grand, and I didn't really know anything about the quality of the piano, and though it looked beautiful, it really was not a very good piano. And then I went off to college, and I played a kawaii. And I thought, kawaii? What, what is this kawaii? I never heard of kawaii. So that's when they kind of were first coming into the country. And if you go to um, a good music school, likely they're going to have pretty good pianos. And that's where I learned all about the kawaii. But even though this one is not a kawaii, I have a kawaii, a K-kawaii. The reason I bought that piano was because I played for an event at uh, La Valencia in La Jolla. And they had, I, I believe it was a rosewood kawaii. And I said, what is this piano? What is this model? I have to have this very same model piano. And I have a 5 foot 10 kawaii. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful instrument. So there's a little bit of stories in my pianos. This one here is a 7 foot 6 uh, JP Cranberger. And um, it's a very, very good piano as well. Cranberger worked for Steinway for years. So he knows all the family. It's been in the business for years. They know a lot about pianos. So I'm going to play one more song for you. Do I still have time, Mike? <laughs> and uh, I actually, I don't even remember when I wrote this one because I don't have it written down in this particular book. I always write everything by pencil, and then uh, I slowly, painstakingly put it in a program uh, with proper notation. So I don't have on here the date. Uh, but I wrote it. It's on my fifth CD, so it was written before 2010. And um, I call this Seeing You Again, and it's lovely to see some people again in our lives. So this is for those people that you'd like to see again.
thanks for joining me again this time. Um, I'll be practicing until I see you next time, next month, hopefully. Bye.